these amazing coincidences that come up all the time if you really are attuned to them are are showing you that there's something larger than your sensory based perspective when you start understanding that energy is everything and that you can you can move it you can manipulate it in a positive way and change what's going on i mean it changes everything Welcome to Living in the Miracle Zone. This is the place to be if you want to live in the flow of synchronicities and miracles in your everyday life. I'm your host, Marcy Shimoff. I'm a number one New York Times bestselling author. I'm a teacher in the secret and the creator of the worldwide program, Your Year of Miracles. And I have spent my life studying happiness and miracles. And in this podcast, we bring to you extraordinary miracle stories that will inspire you And we bring you groundbreaking miracle tools that will show you how to live your most miraculous life. And it's my heartfelt intention that we all have a fabulous time together. So welcome to the Miracle Zone. And today, I am so thrilled because I am joined by not one, but by two fabulously special people, the amazing husband and wife team of Donna Eden and David Feinstein. So let me tell you a little bit about both of them. Donna Eden is among the world's most sought, most joyous, and most authoritative speakers for energy medicine. She has been able to clairvoyantly see the body's energy fields for her whole life. And really, her healing abilities are legendary. And from her ability to see the body's energies, she's developed a system for teaching other people to work effectively with their own energies. Her energy medicine masterclass has had more than 6 million views, and she's gotten a Lifetime Achievement Awards for her amazing career from the Energy Medicine Research Institute and the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. And she has a classic book that if you know anything about energy medicine, you have heard of the book. It's called Energy Medicine, and it's been a textbook in hundreds of healing classes. And her phenomenally fabulous husband, David Feinstein, is a pioneer in developing innovative therapeutic approaches. He's had nine national awards for his books on consciousness and healing. He's a licensed psychologist, and he's won a zillion awards. And his book on relationships, The Energies of Love, that he co-authored with Donna, is a New York Times bestseller. And we're going to ask a little bit about relationship stuff as we get into it too. So together, David and Donna have really built one of the world's largest organizations teaching the hands-on use of energy medicine. And they have served tens of thousands of clients uh, teaching throughout the world. And I will tell you a little of my own experience. And I don't know that you even know this, but I am a fangirl from the way back. (laughs) Back in the 80s, I remember I went to my first energy psychology conference and there was the superstar, Donna Eden. And I was just glued to every word you said back then. And I have loved energy medicine ever since. You have taught at my programs, my Year of Miracles programs. We were all the, uh, both of you were introduced to us in person by our dear mutual friend, Dawson Church. Dawson was our first podcast interview more than a year ago on Living in the Miracle Zone. And (laughs) I want to say that I can't be around the two of you without feeling your amazing energy and having a huge smile on my face. So welcome, welcome, welcome to being here with us. (laughs) Well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you. Yes. Well, Well, today is a very special day, actually. Because today you gave birth once again, and you gave birth (laughs) to your newest book, Tapping, Self-Healing with the Transformative Power of Energy Psychology. And I am honored to get to be here with you. And we're going to be talking about how we're going to give some practical things about how we can really use uh, tapping and self-healing and and energy medicine and all of this. But I want to start. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It, it's a it, big deal for us. Yes. <laughs> it is a huge deal to birth a new book. 
And uh, so I would love to hear, I always like to start by hearing, you know, I imagine you both didn't come from totally miraculous lives to begin with, that you had challenges in your life. I don't know your backstory, but I imagine that your lives weren't always miraculous. Maybe you could just share with us a little bit about what your life was like before and how what you what shifted and how your life is miraculous now. Shall I start? <laughs> See, well, except for one time in my life, my life was always good. Ah, it's always good. And I just really, really loved life. I was happy. I had a period in my life in my, in my 20s. <laughs> um, I had in-laws who didn't like me, and that was a shock. It was just a shock. How could they not like me? But I, I didn't fit their, uh, what is it, paradigm. They did. I didn't fit. And and you must never say you see energy, that they were going to lock me away in a mental institute. <laughs> but other than that, and now I've come to believe and see that that time in my life was really necessary to make some steps in my life afterwards. You know, it's like that. I, I don't regret that that time in my life happened. But um, I've, you know, I've, I've always seen energy. So I always thought that everybody else did too. Until your 20s. And yeah, until I was 20 years old, I thought everybody did. And it was a shock to me to find out they didn't. And, and so I thought, well, when you see energy and you see that everything is this, everything moves and the trees and the flowers and us and, and the, our insides, there's this amazing communi- uh, community of cells and I mean, it was amazing uh, seeing energy. And so I, it was just easy to transform anything that was a little bit hard into, oh, well, that's a part of the journey. Or this, oh, the cells will do this and the energy will do that. And that's just, it, that's how it was for me. But it was also, I mean, you've had your share of challenges. Yeah. You, it's not like you just were given a, you know, no. oh, an okay. easy ticket. See, I forget the, the hard <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, Selective I, forgetting. <laughs> I, uh, growing up, I had, when I was, uh, the first week of life, I had a very high fever and evidently burned off uh, certain uh, enzymes that. The ability to produce them. Yeah, the ability to produce enzymes. And so I was allergic to everything, everything. I was allergic to the things that are supposed to make you healthy, like vegetables and fruits. I couldn't eat anything that grew out of the ground. And um, somehow uh, my mom made it okay. It was, life was still good. (laughs) And then, but as I got a little bit older, I didn't have a cookie till I was, I think in the eighth grade. Well, no wonder you're so happy. You weren't a (laughs) sugar addict as a kid. (laughs) Wow. Anyway, as I got older, I, I was... I got asthma around 13. And then at 16, I got multiple sclerosis. And I was, I really, I mean, I, I'd walk and fall. And and, after, and as I got a little bit older, I couldn't walk any longer. And I spent much of my time in a wheelchair. And um, it never occurred to me to use healing, I mean, to use energy for healing. It, I didn't, I just thought this was the normal, natural thing of life was energy, and uh, and then at twenty seven I had a heart attack <laughs> and, because because of the MS, all her organs were breaking. Yeah. Down. Whoa. <laughs> yes. And then I went to see five different specialists, and every one of them virtually said almost the same thing that that I wasn't going to make it. There was nothing they could do. That everything was breaking down, and. And the last two told me that I should get my affairs in order because I've got two little kids and who was going to raise them. <laughs> and but whatever for whatever reason, when that last doctor said this to me, I felt like lightning struck me. And I I knew I was going to go home and heal myself that day. I would start healing myself. And what I did was I the my my uh, quadriceps, my upper legs. Uh, there was no energy in them. They couldn't. They couldn't hold my body up anymore. So I went home, sat down, put one hand around my upper thigh and one hand around my knee, and I found it only took about three minutes for it to hook up. 
Uh, and I thought, oh boy, this is going to be a snap. <laughs> this is going to be so easy. But I went all over my body figuring out where it wasn't moving or where it wasn't making connection. I would hold it until it began to connect. And um, my life changed that day because I, 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 at first I did not heal from multiple sclerosis, but my legs got stronger. And then I found in time, I no longer was allergic to wheats and grains. I had my first sandwich and it was just miraculous. And then I found I could eat vegetables. And I mean, when I was a teenager, I ended up in the hospital. I, I did not have sugar diabetes, but I still ended up with an insulin shock from eating string beans. I wanted them so bad and I couldn't eat them. But now suddenly I was eating things I loved and it was so incredible. And that just kept going on until I started. Oh, I, one of the things that I had for MS was, you know what tetany is? Yes. Te yes. I had tetany everywhere all over my whole body. Which is so when I, your parts of your body freeze up. Yes. And I, sometimes I couldn't speak or talk. I just, my mouth wouldn't work. And well, the tetany went away and it was so amazing. And then I just started getting more and more well. I think it took in all, it probably took up to two years to have everything gone, that I was in perfect health. But when that happened, I just wanted to share it with everybody. Uh, not, not how to get over MS, but that everybody had the tools to be able to heal themselves. And that we just, it was just learning them. And uh, so I, I just, you know, that was my life. I had, and it was, and it was joyful. It was, I was in awe of this ability that we all have. It was so thrilling and so amazing that um, that I I just would grab people off the street and if I saw something and said, you know, I think I can help you. Come on, you know, I need a way to work on them. Well, <laughs> Donna, I have to say, I've never said this to anybody before, but I'm so thankful that you had MS. Oh, yeah, because yeah. truly, you know, this uh, my friend Lisa Nichols says that our mess becomes our message. Yes. You know, yes. it was it was that that led you to an entire career decades Absolutely. of you helping people see how they can do healing through energy. Yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. It was, I was meant to go through that. I was meant to go through that. And then I was meant to share everything I knew. And in, in the beginning, when I started teaching, I really didn't think of myself as a teacher. I thought, I'm going to share this. You know, I want to share it. And so um, that's been my life for 40 oh. some years now. Well, should we, and David, I'm going to get to your story in just a minute, but I should let people know for those who are watching this on YouTube who are getting to see the <laughs> video version. If you're not seeing the video version, you want to hop over to YouTube also and look at that version because you have to see Donna. She's this bright light. She lights up the whole room. Both of you have million dollar smiles. And Donna is not the age that you would suspect she is. So hold on to your chairs while I tell you, while Donna tells you, how young are you, Donna? I'm 81. <laughs> Not only do you not look it, I mean, you you really look like you could be in your early 50s, truly. But <laughs> there's my no. Are in their yeah, I know you look younger than than your daughters are in age. And, but, but it's just beyond that. It's the whole energy field. The, your aliveness, your vitality is phenomenal. So and I believe this is for everybody. And I'm so glad you're going to be sharing with us some of the secrets to this, because that's that's everybody. what's for all of us. That, that's right. It's, it's, it's our sacred secret that you can you can unveil and know and, and be able to use on yourself for the rest of your life so that aging is not a, a hard thing. Aging can be quite wonderful. I really love my age. So uh. that's beautiful. That's wonderful. So, David, what about your life? How did how did your life roll in the area of miracles? Well, I grew up miracle skeptical. Uh -huh. Okay, good. We like those types. So, um, you know, I was, I was a scientist. I was. Uh, before I got interested in human behavior, I was uh, very, very much into the science of, of studying the world. And Einstein, I believe, said that there's two ways 
to live your life. One is if nothing is a miracle, and I was in that realm. And then the other is if everything is a miracle. And so slowly it's been dawning on me <laughs> that everything is a miracle. It, do, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to have spent the last 46 years with this one. Because <laughs> she does live much more in the miracle realm than my um, kind of instinct. And, and you know, but, but, uh, but they're, you know, just watching our journey has been a miracle. We had our little practices. She was doing hands-on work with, individuals. I was doing my psychotherapy work and suddenly we're catapulted into this really national spotlight where we're seen as leaders in the healing area and the alternative healing area. And we never planned it. We never tried to do that. We never tried to create a certification program or build an organization. It all just kind of happened around us with us really in some ways trying to hold it back, trying to slow it down. And so that's that kind of gives you a sense of miracle. I think that part of the miracle is that day by day, I feel more attuned to larger forces in the universe that are doing their best to help humanity along and um, it's you know it's just amazing that we've gotten this far. It's just amazing <laughs> to look at the little creatures that came out of the sea and <laughs> wound up evolving to us. That's just beyond beyond the biggest miracles I can imagine. But it also happens in our lives. Well, I so appreciate that you come from that more scientific background. That you didn't have the experiences like Adana had from birth. And so that this has come to you through a more uh, left uh, left brain lens. And I think that that's really a beautiful um, balance because there are some people that just, you know, this is natural, like, oh, of course. And the other people like, no, let me, let me experience this. Let me, let me see this for myself. And so it, I really appreciate that you opened to that. And of course, I guess being married to Donna, <laughs> I, would, would require you to be open to some degree of that. But it's just beautiful to see. And you both together, you wrote Energy Medicine. And it's been, it's a, the foundation of your work together. It's huge. I'd love to hear what is your perspective on energy and how energy relates to miracles or living in the miracle zone. Well, energy is all there is. I mean, that is it. And, and we are meant I, I'm convinced that our ancient ancestors knew energy healing very well, that this is the only thing they had to go on. And they knew it as in every way, um, how to make themselves happier, how to make themselves uh, survive an illness, how to do everything. When you start understanding that energy is everything and that you can you can move it, you can manipulate it in a positive way and change what's going on, I mean, it changes everything, uh, not only just in your physical health, but how your, your your spirit, how your spirit is doing, how everything is working. I mean, that that law of attraction is very, very true. And um, yeah, it. And if in, you, in our early days, our big argument was, "What do you mean by energy?" What do you say to me? She. <laughs> She talks about energy healing, energy medicine. And I had just come from medical school with Johns Hopkins, where I taught for seven years. And energy has very specific definition and parameters. And she's talking about something totally different. She's talking about energy that has memory, <laughs> energy that is intelligent. But that's the key is that in terms of using energy to turn into a more miraculous life is to really listen to what the energies are telling you, to assume that there's intelligence there broadcasting to you, but in very low volume, you have to listen very carefully to pick up on those broadcasts, but it is there if you can tune in. One of the ways you had mentioned it earlier, may have been before we started recording synchronicities that mm -hmm. these amazing coincidences that 
come up all the time if you really are attuned to them are are showing you that there's something larger than your sensory based perspective i appreciate that you say that if you're attuned to them what we've what what i believe is that there are ways that you can learn to put yourself in the flow of synchronicities Yes, the, and and that that is what it is that you're doing. And I I know that you have seen incredible what would we would all call miracle healings, people yes, healing absolutely. themselves in every way. I mean, both physically, emotionally, you know, relationally. Maybe just for fun, do you have one one healing that might stand out? That's like, oh my god, that's that's really a miracle. Well, there's there's one that Donna was in the audience, so it was really kind of interesting, we were in Copenhagen and mm -hmm. there were 300 people in the audience and it was not an energy psychology or tapping conference. It was a totally different field. So nobody in the audience knew anything about EFT or tapping or energy psychology. And when I have an hour and a half slot to present it, I like to do a demonstration. And so um, I find that phobias are a good way to approach it because the, you can often resolve a phobia completely in a half hour tapping session. Not always, but often enough that it's worth it. So I ask the audience um, who has a phobia, I define with you know, an irrational fear that gets in the way of their life, that they'd be willing to be a demonstration subject. About five people raise their hands and I took the mic into the audience and had each one describe it as I'm trying to kind of figure out, okay, who's going to be the best demonstration subject. And so I called up a young woman who had a fear of storms. That was her phobia. It was her fear of storms. And so we start tapping and tapping on acupuncture points that send signals to the amygdala that reduce the threat response. So we're tapping on these points and as we do, her sense of distress is increasing rather than decreasing. It almost always decreases, but suddenly it's increasing. And then she reveals that she had been in the tsunami in Southeast Asia that you can remember some time ago that took thousands of lives. It mm -hmm. was, it was just, and she watched other people get swept away to see it. She hung on. And she wound up breaking, having a few ribs broken and needing surgery. And she never dealt with it emotionally. So here it is. It's kind of coming up and she's reliving it. She's totally not aware that I'm there, that the audience is there. She is back in the tsunami. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, oh, I should have chosen the one with the fear of spiders. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the first thing I did was regain contact with her. So I just kind of got her to say, you know, can you hear my voice? Stay with my voice. My voice is your lifeline right now. Come back. Where's my voice? Okay, now see if you can open your eyes and see me. See, so I got her reoriented to the room. But then we started tapping. I just, I tapped on myself as I asked her to model what I was doing, to repeat it. And it didn't take that long. It was I expected it to take longer, but maybe within 10 or 15 minutes, she is really calm. And then we are able to go into some of the other aspects of that experience, the terror of it and, and different pieces, and get those all reduced from a high level of distress to no distress until she's able to talk about the tsunami mm. without at all being reactivated. Mm. And the um, audience is there watching this, not, not, not having a clue that anything like this would happen. And um, she, she was just fine. And then afterwards, or really let me know how dramatic a session it was, the um, conference organizer came up to me and said, now, you, you, you guys staged that, right? <laughs> but we hadn't. Yeah. Wow, that's so great. And I've, I I have also witnessed experiences like that, where people have just gone from something they've been carrying for years or their whole lifetime, and then it's, it's suddenly released. 
uh, speaking of synchronicities, I just have to say, you know, um, our mutual friend Dawson just texted me right now. Uh, <laughs> it, it came up on my screen. We're going to Mount, confirming going to going to see uh, going to where we're going to get together with you guys. So I <laughs> synchronicity. The timing of that, he rarely texts me. So that was I love that synchronicity. <laughs> so let's talk about let's get get really practical. And give people some really practical things that we can do. You know, I, I know that you're both been very interested in EFT, emotional freedom techniques, tapping, and you know, your book that 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 got born today uh, is <laughs> all about tapping. So maybe you could tell us a few tapping tips so that we can live more in the miracle zone and and why this works. Right. Well, the reason it works is that when you tap on an acupuncture point. Acupuncture points are more electrical, electrically sensitive than other parts of the skin. And they also have certain molecules that convert pressure into electricity. So you tap on the point, it converts, it's, it's a process, this doesn't just come from energy psychology or energy medicine, it's a physical, biological process called mechanosensory transduction, where the pressure is converted to electricity. Then the electricity, where does that impulse go? Where, where it goes is along the body's connective tissue. The connective tissue is made up in part of collagen, which is a semiconductor. So rather than the signal having to go from the neuron to synapse to neuron to synapse, it goes directly like an electrical current. Where does it go? It depends on what the person is thinking. So if the person, for instance, the woman I just described, she's thinking of the tsunami, her entire limbic system, her emotional hardware goes into a high stress response. The tapping is sending signals that reduce the distress. So mm -hmm. the brain is getting opposing messages, but the electrical signals are more powerful. So they are reducing the distress. And so that's what everybody witnessed happen in front of their eyes mm -hmm. was that she goes from enormous, overwhelming stress to being able to talk calmly. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one piece of of it. There's, one of there's the one of the how it works or why it works. So what could you share with us that we can do? Now many people are just listening, not watching this. So maybe you could give us a couple things that we could do to to help us be more in that space of the miracle zone where synchronicities, synchronicities can happen for us or healing or more open to our own healing. Well, the world is in so much turmoil and it's a source of distress for all of us. It's just us, everybody. It's just hard to know, but you can tap in ways that help you to maneuver through it. So mm -hmm. for instance, if everybody would think about the points that are on the inside of their eyebrows and just tap on those points and tap on them kind of gently, but enough that you really feel it. And just repeat after me. Even though the world is looking hopeless. Even though the world is looking hopeless. Looking hopeless. Now come over to the sides of your eyes and say, I choose to recognize my ability to be creative in influencing what happens to me and to those I touch. I, I choose, I choose to, be to be creative in influencing, in, in influencing what happens to me, and, what those happens to me and those that I touch. Then underneath the eyes, even though the world is sometimes looks hopeless, even though the and world sometimes looks hopeless. Sometimes looks hopeless. Hopeless under your nose. I choose to recognize my ability to creatively influence what happens to me and those I touch. I choose. I choose to creatively recognize influence how, I, how I can influence myself, myself and, those, and I touch. those I touch. So you can go through a whole set of points, just repeating that. And what it does is it puts it into the nervous system. So you're embedding that into your nervous system. You're combining the really difficult emotion with something that's powering. 
So mm. the empowering part is what comes up when you are feeling overwhelmed by the difficult emotion. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. I love that. I already feel better. <laughs> I already feel much better just from that, you know, whatever, one minute, one and a half minutes. So uh, Donna, what do you, what do you love oh. to do? What are your favorite go-tos? Okay. Say you're really, really stressed out. You rub your hands together and you shake them off and lay your fingers over your closed eyelids. Now take a deep breath into your nose. And as you let your breath out, drag your fingers to your temples. Now take another deep in-breath and push them up over your ears, around your ears, down your neck, and hang on your shoulders. And then bring your hands to your heart chakra and come home to yourself. Now I'm going to tell you what you just did. When you go across the eyes like that, you're in a, a, a system in the radiant circuits called the regulating flow and it helps to put help you regulate something differently and then when you come to these points right here in your temples these are points called triple warmer points and triple warmer governs the fight flight or freeze response so when you put your fingers there and you hold them for a bit you know it will it will take down your stress level and then going up and around your ears and down around them that's going backwards on triple warmer, which takes, um, it just really takes your stress load down. And then when you take your hands down your neck, you're going down your vagus nerve and, and your whole nervous system calms. And then hanging on your shoulders and then dragging them to your heart, you're coming home to yourself again. I mm. like that one. But there's lots. I, I think, go ahead. Well, I, just, I, I love that one. And I love how, you can do it. Nobody has to kind of, I mean, I, you could do it sitting in a meeting and nobody knows, has to know that you're doing it. Exactly. I had, um, we're here in San Diego. We've just been uh, helping teach a class and somebody came up to me and said, the simplest exercise I do is still her favorite. That when she feels, she feels lost around people sometime and just like she doesn't quite belong. And she said the thing that has gotten her through it and to even take our certification program is put one finger in your belly button, one finger at your third eye, push in and pull them both up and take a deep breath. What you're doing is you're hooking up a governing meridian that goes up your spine and central that goes up the front of your body. And when they hook up, it could happen real fast or it could take maybe a minute. But when it hooks up, you create a um, a microcosmic orbit around your body that just pulls you together, pulls you home to yourself. And nothing harmful really can harm you out there if you're hooked up. And it's just remarkable to me how these simple things like that hookup is it can be done in so little time and can shift the energy. You know, you could spend a lot of time trying to think your way out of that and it may or may not work, but you could spend 30 seconds doing a little bit of energy shifting. And it it also makes your aura go out further so that you just have a natural protection around you. Do you see that when you see people doing this? Can you actually see, oh my gosh, that really shifted her. Yes. yes, Okay. So we'll take your word for it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So I I have to ask you both because I heard you comment that you've been married 46 years and that's a long time to be married, but as it is, but to be married and working together seems even longer. So I want to know how have you used some of the things that you include in tapping in this new book that you have out? How do you, what, what, what can we learn there about how to be, how to shift in our relationships. Well, it does have a chapter on relationships. So oh, it does? I'm going yeah. right to that. Can I go straight to that? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you you had, you know, before we started recording, you had asked us if we minded um, sharing how we've used it in our own relationship. And we actually have written about that in our <laughs> other book that you mentioned, The Energies of Love, the New York Times bestseller, where we have a whole chapter talking about how each of us has used tapping in our relationship. And one of the things, there's several uses. One is that it you can, you know, there's nothing like being in love to find out what is 
unfinished in your <laughs> psychological evolution. So yeah, I, I love uh, that phrase. Love brings up everything unlike itself to be healed, yeah, and that's exactly. what relationship does. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So so you can you can really dig into your past and use the tapping to begin to heal some of the unhealed wounds that you never would really, there they wouldn't be an issue if you weren't trying to get really intimately close to someone. But mm -hmm. when you do, all these things come up. So each of us uh, went back and talk about it in that book to our own personal upbringing and some of the traumas in our own early lives. In, in the new book, Tapping, we don't talk about ourselves, but we have what we call test drivers, people that mm -hmm. went through each chapter before we made, we released it as a book, and we tell their stories. So uh -huh. you can see it illustrated in in that chapter. But for us, it it's there there is an immediate use. Like um, I don't know any couple that doesn't trigger one another. Yeah. I mean, we trigger one. We are very different in what we want and and how we look at the world. You may have noticed that. And <laughs> so when those triggers happen, one of the things you can do is you can tap on it because you don't want to be nasty to your partner. You really, I mean, maybe you do at that moment, but, <laughs> you, but knowing that you can tap it down so that it becomes discussable instead of disgusting, you know, it's, it's uh -huh. just like you can talk about it. And then you can also work not only in the moment, but you can disable those triggers so that if every time that I kind of look at her in a certain way that reminds her of her sixth grade teacher, that's a trigger. And we can <laughs> work on tapping that so that it separates my look from her sixth grade teacher experience. Mm -hmm. So 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 you can do it more, that's more on the surface level, but also you can really change deep patterns. Nobody gave us a chance of making it. Nobody did. Now, it, took us, it took us seven years actually to get married. So we've known each other for 46 years, but we fought it out for the first seven years. <laughs> but I, I often think, you know, thank God I didn't leave him when I really should have. Because, because it's gotten so good. And energy has has done that. Energy. And I just, I think that it would make everybody happier in this world if they just had an understanding that they could be empowered like that. And God, I, I feel so lucky now. That, oh, I've got. that is so beautiful. And I really appreciate your, your sharing that it wasn't always that way. And that, you know, there were times when, when it was very, very rocky and you used this, yes. you used that energy can change everything. Yes. And I, I absolutely believe it. And I'm, I can't wait to, uh, to, to get the book. And what's, what would you like? What is, why did you want to write this book? What's different about this book than, than the mm -hmm. other books? What, what is it about There's this book? You more than a hundred books out on tapping or yeah. EFT or energy psychology and, we did not want to just write another one. We wanted to take it deeper. And so partially with my my background as a psychologist and Donna's ability to see energies, we took the major reasons that people seek help from a therapist or a, a clergy person or, or or a family member. So, so they seek help because they're sad, okay? They seek help because they're angry they seek help or they're they're getting triggered in in ways that don't seem relevant to, to life they, they seek help because they have fears or anxieties so we took each of those relationships peak performance but the the ones that are really um everyday emotions like breaking habits or feeling sad or feeling um anxiety we each chapter that deals with one of those takes it all the way up to the clinical level so mm. you start out with sadness take it up to depression if you start out with worry you take it up to anxiety then panic attacks then ptsd 
Mm. It start out with habits, you take it up to addictions. So each chapter does that ride from, so, so in the beginning of the chapter, we give basic techniques that anyone can do on a self-help basis. So it's a very much a self-help book. But as it gets into depression or addictions, we really look at what the a skilled therapist needs to do. Mm -hmm. And we and so from my background as a psychologist, I looked at the best practices mm -hmm. in psychology and psychotherapy for treating addictions or treating depression or treating PTSD and showed where the tapping can come into that because you don't throw away the best practices, you augment them. Mm -hmm. and what I find is that the tapping supercharges the best practices. And so mm. the book tells if you're the client who has severe depression, we say in the book, don't just try to do it with the book. Really have somebody that's skilled helping you. But here are the things you can be doing to assist that process. And it also speaks to the therapist. If you're the therapist working with somebody that is depressed, here are some of the ways you can bring tapping into what you're already doing to help it be faster and more effective. So that's what I consider mm. the largest, nobody else has tried to yeah. do that. Beautiful. What a great contribution. And, and uh, you know, my husband, Sergio, is a therapist, and uh, I know that he will appreciate that very much as well. And I really want to say how much I appreciate the two of you having such a, a, a commitment to helping people on this planet with this that you came across so many years ago. I mean, Donna, you know, as we said, you're 81 and you are still just like, I just feel like there's no stopping this woman. You are just going for it. And so I just, I want to end with a question about, you know, just what's, what excites both of you? What excites both of you in your life? And as you maybe see the people shifting more, while I think there's a lot of junk going on in the world, a lot of stress going on in the world, I think there's also a lot of awakening going on in the world. Yes. And to me, yes. that is so exciting. And I just, anyway, so I, I just want to know what excites, what excites you, Donna? Oh, well, one of the things very much so is uh, the awakening to energy medicine that people are really learning it and getting themselves well and vital and alive. And I mean, that is so thrilling to see people shift, you know, some, some ancient paradigm that doesn't work anymore and that they, that they can take that kind of empowerment. I love that. Mm. Uh, also, I'm excited about my next phase of life. Know what that is going to be, and I'm I'm excited for life. That's so exquisite, you know, that you are excited for the mystery of what's yes. ahead, the yes. opening to because you know that whatever it is, it's just going to be magical. Now, most people don't look at aging in that particular way. They don't look at oh my goodness, I'm in my 80s and and I can't wait for what's next. And I <laughs> think it's just your whole orientation towards life and. And, and, you know, both of you. And, and David, what excites you? Well, what she said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think yeah, people are, I, th I think it's, there's a race going on right now. And um, there, there are forces that are really destructive and we have to recognize those and they're powerful. And there is at each point of light of the individual soul, there is more and more empowerment happening. So mm -hmm. it's really wild to watch this all unfold. But humanity has survived so many crises. It's like we we have a history of having made it. I mean, we, we are so much weaker than our predators. And yet mm -hmm. we have managed to really create cultures that go far beyond what our predators who are stronger than us have been able to begin to imagine. So, um, so I love culture. I love what we, I love what's happening in music and theater and all, all the ways mm -hmm. that the, this crisis is being represented and worked out in the creative imagination of individuals. And mm -hmm. one, one of the, one of our chapters in the book is peak performance and 
really how to, as a creative being, how to really maximize your creativity in the area that is important to you. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of great stuff ahead in the world. You know, they always say that that a time of major crisis is followed by a renaissance. Yes. And I think right now we are, we're having a renaissance of energy. In ener- the, it's being fueled by energy. And you, both of you, pioneers in this. And I'm so grateful to you both. I'm excited about uh, the book, Tapping, Self-Healing with the Transformative Power of Energy Psychology. And um, people, everybody can get more information about Donna and David and, and the book at EdenMethod.com. E-D-E-N method.com. We'll put that in the, in the show notes as well. And of course, the book is available everywhere where books are, but go to EdenMethod.com and you'll get more information. And I just, I, 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 I just interrupt that. Please also. go for um, it. The, the EdenMethod.com is absolutely accurate, but um, the specific website that talks about energy psychology is called EnergyTapping.com. Oh, so that's where they'll learn more about the book and uh, energy psychology per se. Perfect. We will put that in there as well. It's energy tapping, tapping dot com, energy tapping dot com. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I am so grateful to both of you again for being here with us on the birthday of your new book. Yes. And I, I like to end every uh, session with a quote. So today's podcast, we are ending with a quote from Donna Eden where she said, when all your energies are brought into harmony, your body flourishes. And when your body flourishes, your soul has a soil in which you can blossom in this world. These are the ultimate reasons for energy medicine to prepare the soil and nurture the blossom. (laughs) How beautifully said you, you, you have both helped us prepare the soil and nurture the blossoms in our own lives. And I, I just thank you so much. And I send you so much love as I send to everyone who is here listening today. Thank you for listening. I hope that you are feeling inspired and uplifted and more in the Miracle Zone after our time together. And of course, please share the Miracle Zone love with your friends and your family. And if you want to live more in the Miracle Zone, you can take our free two-minute quiz to find out what your miracle superpower is. So you just go to MiracleZoneQuiz.com, MiracleZoneQuiz.com. And remember that your life of miracles is waiting for you. It is your birthright. And simply by listening to this podcast, you are taking a step forward into the Miracle Zone. Enjoy. Enjoy.